I want you to listen to this question that I asked you today here in our lesson. Can your reputation, can your reputation prevent God from saving you? One of the more disturbing things that I have seen in the faith is so-called believers telling somebody that they can't be saved because of who they are. And many people, they have bought into their reputation. They have bought into the idea that they can't be saved because of their reputation. But what we are going to see here in our Sunday School lesson this week is something that we have seen all quarter long, something that I have preached about on several occasions. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what somebody say about you. God can and God will save you. All that you need to do is go to the Lord. God, he does not care about your reputation. So again, like I said, that is something that we're going to see here in our Sunday School lesson this week where our lesson that takes place there in the seventh chapter of Luke's gospel in a very familiar passage of scripture, scripture that I have preached from before, scripture that I have taught from before on several occasions as well. We'll see there in the 36th verse, our lesson that opens with the Pharisee having invited Jesus to come to his house for a meal. And we're told that there was a woman who was in the city who we are told was a sinner. That means that it was well known, well known, that she was a sinner. She had a reputation for being a sinner. So we're told there that she heard that Jesus was going to this Pharisee's house. And so we'll see there that she made her way to the home of that Pharisee and she brought with her to that home a flask of fragrant oil. So let's make a couple of notes here about what we just read there. First off, I want to make a note that this woman, she is moving with intentions. Okay, this woman, she has thought about what she's about to do next. She has meditated on what she is about to do next. There is a reason why we see her grab that alabaster flask of, of fragrant oil. She know what she is set out to do. Now, some of us, we again may look at that verse. We know that Jesus was invited to this Pharisee's house, but some of us, we may wonder, well, why is she going to the house? Who invited her to go to that house? Well. In that day, according to their customs, it was uh, customary for neighbors and for guests to go to the house on such an occasion where, again, someone who is of prominence, if you will, was going to be at this home. So it was customary that your neighbor would come in uninvited and they would stand around and, and they would watch you eat with your guest and they would listen to the conversation that would be had. So this woman, she's essentially following the custom. She heard that Jesus was going to be at this house of the Pharisee and she makes her way there. And again, she is moving with intention. Keep that in mind. So we'll see there, that as the Pharisee's home had filled up with guests, the woman will see that she took a spot. She, again, with intention here, she takes a place behind where Jesus was reclined on the couch. And so again, on that note about customs, yes, Jesus was reclined on the couch. So was the Pharisee sitting across from him was reclined on the couch as well. They did not sit down to a dinner table like, like what you and I would think of uh, in chairs to where, you know, it would be more of a, a proper setting, I guess you could say. This was more of a relaxed setting where, to where, yes, they were sitting at a table, but they were reclined on a couch. You could picture it as Jesus was probably laying on his side, uh, relaxing, had his feet, you know, kind of behind him. And so again, this woman, she takes a place again, planned out intentions here. She takes her place behind Jesus. So we'll see there as Jesus and the Pharisee ate the woman, she began to wash Jesus's feet again from behind. We'll see there. And as she washed his feet, we're told that she, she began to shed tears and she used her tears along with her hair to wash Jesus's feet. And after washing, after wiping his feet, she anointed them with oil and she kissed them as well. And all along while this is happening, We'll see there in the 39th verse that the Pharisee, he is thinking to himself. And we'll see there that the Pharisee, he's making note of what Jesus was allowing the woman to do there. So he grumbled, thinking again within himself there. This man, if he were a prophet, he would know who and what manner of woman this is touching him, for she's a sinner. 
Now, there are a few things that we need to make a note of here from, from the thoughts, these inner thoughts of the Pharisee here. The first thing that, that we need to make a note of here is that the Pharisee, he suggests here within his thoughts that, that he knows more than Jesus, that he knows better than Jesus. I, I say this because we'll see there that he suggested that Jesus was ignorant of who this woman was. Look at that again. He again suggests that Jesus had no idea about who this woman was. So was Jesus, was he ignorant of who this woman was? Did he have no idea about, about who this woman was? First and foremost, Jesus is the son of God. He is God in the flesh. God, we say, is almighty. We say that he's omnipotent. He is omniscient. He's omnipresent. If you don't know what those words means, it means that he's all powerful, that he's everywhere at all times. And then again, omniscient, he is all knowing. Surely, Jesus knew exactly who this woman was, just like he knows who all of us, who all of us are. Again, he knows our downsitting and our uprising as, as David said. So first and foremost, Jesus was not ignorant of who this woman was. The second thing that I want to note about that scripture there is that this scripture tells us nothing about this woman's sin. We know that she again was a sinner but we don't know anything about her sins. Aren't all of us sinners as well? The last thing, the last time I checked is that, that all of us are sinners. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. The difference between the believer and the non-believer is that we are justified of our sins through our faith in Christ. That is the only thing that separates us. But again, all of us are sinners. All of us, we fall short of the glory of God. But when one repents of sin out of, out of genuineness, out of sincerity, again, truly repenting, going to the Lord and confessing faith with their heart, that is when we become saved or when we become justified sinners. But this Pharisee, again, he, he suggests here himself that, that he is perfect. And, and he places himself on a pedal. As many believers, again, many believers, so-called believers, love to do this today to where they place themselves on a pedal above others, to where they look at themselves as, hey, I'm saved, that guy's just a sinner. Again, never forget, you're still a sinner that falls short of the glory of God. You need his only begotten son to justify you of your sins. The third thing that I want to note here about this verse here, again, just taking a look at that. We see a Pharisee within his heart here, deny his service. He denies his service. He denies his role as a Pharisee. Think about this. What was the role of the Pharisee? The Pharisee, they were supposed to serve all people. That includes those who were sinners. They were, to suppose, they were supposed to serve all people. But here, this Pharisee, this man, he shows a prejudice. He has a prejudice against this woman. And his prejudice against this woman was because of her reputation. This Pharisee, he wouldn't have sat down and talked with this woman. This Pharisee, he certainly would not have had this woman to be, to be washing his feet and, and to be anointing his feet with this oil. So again, this, this Pharisee, because of his prejudice, here in his inner thoughts, we see a man pious in his way. We see a man that because of his pious way here, we see him sinning. We see him sinning in his heart. And so we'll see here, as we take a look at the 40th verse, that Jesus, he had something to teach this Pharisee. This, this, this Pharisee, he was again pious in his faith, and Jesus, he had a word that he said that he had to, to teach this man. And so when we look at the 41st verse there, Jesus, he shares a, a rather short parable here with the Pharisee about two men who were in debt to a creditor. One will see owed the creditor more than the other. Now, neither of the two was able to pay back what they owed to this creditor. And so the 42nd verse tells us there that the creditor wasn't a money hungry creditor here, as we'll see that he chose to freely forgive, freely forgive both of the debtors. And so Jesus, he asked the Pharisee there, 
which of the debtors will love the creditor more? Now, what do you think about that? Which of these two debtors do you think would have loved the creditor more? The Pharisee, he gives an answer there. The Pharisee, he says, I suppose the one whom the creditor forgave more. And Jesus, he responded to him, you have rightly judged. I think it's very interesting here that the Pharisee, again, within his thoughts about, again, the woman washing Jesus' feet there, he was very certain. He was very certain about about who the woman was. He was certain that, that Jesus shouldn't have been letting this woman touch on him. But here, a question that I believe the answer is very straightforward in, this Pharisee, he is reluctant to answer. He's, he's answering hesitantly there. Again, just note there, he says, I suppose. And then Jesus said, well, you answered right. And you can imagine that Jesus in his response to him is like, why are you second guessing? Why are you saying, I suppose you seem very certain about, about one thing. Why aren't you certain about this? Okay, Jesus, he is teaching a lesson here. And the lesson that Jesus is teaching here is something that you and I, that, that we must understand as well. In this very short parable here, the ones who are in depth is us. All of us, we are in depth to the Lord. You may begin to wonder, well, why are we in depth to God? Well, think about this. What are you doing in this exact moment that you should be grateful for, that you should be thankful for? You are living, you are breathing, right? We, we have a life and this life that we have, whether you realize it or not, it is a wonderful gift that we have been given by God for us to be living, for us to be breathing, for us to see our loved ones, for us to be able to continue to go out and do the things that we desire to do. That's a blessing. And, and we are in debt to the Lord. But how do we pay him back? We pay him back by going out, living against what he desires for us. We don't live in obedience to his way. We live in disobedience and therefore, therefore we sin. And so what did God have to do for us? Well, he had to give the world his only begotten son. And so, like I said, we, we are in depth to the Lord because again, we have this life that many of us, we're just throwing away. And, and we, we are unable to, to pay back the debt that we owe to the Lord. And so because we are unable to pay back the debt that we owe to the Lord, because we choose to live sinfully, God has made a way for us to again, find forgiveness in his eyes by giving us his only begotten son. By our faith, we are saved. We are freely forgiven. But again, how many of us are actually taking advantage of that today? Many of us, again, we are letting somebody somewhere tell us that we can't be saved. When Jesus, again, he's about to teach a very important lesson here to this Pharisee. So we'll see there that Jesus, he turned and he finally looked at the woman there in the 44th verse. And he has said to her or said to Simon there, do you see this woman? I entered your house and you did not do what was customary. The custom in that day was for the homeowner to be the one to wash the feet not a visiting guest to come into the house and to be washing the one who you invited to come into your home. Again, the Pharisee there, Simon there, did not do what was customary, but again, the woman there had did exactly what was customary. It shows that Simon here, uh, because he did not wash the feet of Jesus, did not keep the custom there. It shows that he had no honor. It showed that he had no respect. It showed that he had no love for Jesus, the one who, had, who he had invited to actually come into his home and to have a meal with him. And so Jesus, he pointed out to Simon there again in the 44th verse there, that the woman, a guest in his house, had done what was customary by washing his feet. Jesus then pointed out that the woman had kissed and anointed his feet. And again, Simon, the so-called man of faith, had failed a customary tradition a tradition that was of love. But again, this man, he was so pious in his way. So do you see what Jesus was getting at here with, with this Pharisee, with Simon here? This Pharisee, again, being very pious, he was missing the mark. The mark of, of what a true believer should be made up of. Again, I, I want you to understand that Jesus, in his commandment, 
Jesus said that the first thing that we should all be doing is yes, having faith, but in that faith, we should be loving the Lord with our whole heart, love. Not only should we be loving the Lord with our whole heart, but we should be loving our neighbor as we love ourselves, love. This Pharisee, Simon, was again misjudging, misjudging Jesus. He was also misjudging the woman as well. And he was doing so because he lacked love in his heart. He again, he was missing the mark. We as believers, we have to stop missing the mark today. There are many of us who are missing the mark and we are missing the mark of faith because we don't have love in our heart. Love has to be in your heart if you say that you are a child of God. If you lack love, how can you bear any good fruit? This Pharisee, he wasn't bearing any good fruit. He wasn't helping one who he should have actually been helping. And then he was misjudging Jesus because again, Jesus, he had no problem with this woman who yes, was a sinner. And so still talking to Simon, we'll see there in the 47 verse that Jesus, he said to him, her sins, which are many are forgiven for she loved much. So does that mean that because Jesus said her sins were many, does this mean that Simon was right about this woman? Does this mean that the Pharisee was right about this woman in, in the fact that she was a sinner? No. And, and the reason why I say no is because the fact of the matter is that all of us, we are sinning, sinners and our sins, guess what? They are many. Nobody is perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Nobody in this world is perfect. The same that was said of this woman can be said about us. We are sinners and our sins, they are many. All of us, we need to be doing what this woman did. We need to be making our way to the Lord. And, and again, I say this to all of you who, who have not made your way to the Lord because of what somebody has said about you, because somebody has said that you can't be saved. Do what the woman did, ignore, ignore what those folks are saying. Your relationship is between you and God. Nobody else is in it. You need to make your way to the Lord. Ignore what people are saying about you. Ignore what your reputation might be saying about you. The Lord isn't concerned about your reputation. The only thing that the Lord is concerned about is if you will make your way to him. The doors are open. And the reason why the doors are open to him is because he gave the world his only begotten son. He has given us all an opportunity to come and to make our way to him and to stand before him and to find mercy and to find forgiveness in his eyes. You can do that. Again, I say to you today, ignore what anybody else has to say about you, about whether or not you can be saved. And so Jesus, he said to Simon there again in that 47 verse, he said to him, to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. This is a statement that should never be said about one who is supposed to be a, a servant, one who's supposed to be a child of God, one who's supposed to have faith in the Lord. In the Lord. Love and forgiveness is, is what we should breathe into the world. That, that is what we should be as children of the Lord. We should be walking love. We should be walking mercy. We should be walking forgiveness. And so Jesus will see there in the 48th verse that he now turns his full attention here to the woman and he speaks directly to her. Jesus, he says to her, your sins are forgiven. Then we'll see in the 49th verse that he said to her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is what, this is what she wanted. This is all this woman wanted. This is why she went to the home of this Pharisee. And like I said, she went there with intentions. She, she felt the weight, the, the heavy burden of, of her sin. Again, which Jesus said were many. We don't know what her sin was, but she wanted relief from that. And again, this Pharisee, I don't think he ever would have helped her out. And I don't believe that he helped her out before. And I don't think any of the religious leaders was offering this woman the help that she needed. The only thing that they were doing was sitting back and saying, well, she's a sinner. And, and they were moving like she was already lost. I am a firm believer 
that as long, as long as somebody is living, as long as somebody is breathing, they have a chance, they have an opportunity to find forgiveness in the eyes of God. They have a chance, they have an opportunity to repent. And, and what we, the church, all of us who are of sincere faith, what we should be doing today, and again, I say should, we should be helping to lead others to the Lord rather than pushing them away from God. That's something that I have been saying since I began preaching. Because again, I have seen on several occasions where, where people who are of the church who are supposed to be believers have pushed people away from the Lord rather than welcome them in to God. And so again, for all of you today who like this woman, desire to have your sins forgiven, you desire for that weight to be lifted up off of your shoulders. I want you to listen to, to my words and I want you to listen to them clearly today. Ignore what somebody is telling you when they say to you that you can't be saved or or even if they mock you for, for trying to go to the church or, or for trying to go to the Lord to find forgiveness. Ignore all of that mess. Ignore it. Make your way to the Lord while you still have time. As I preached in, in a recent sermon just last week, there must be a sense of urgency today for, for sinners to repent and to turn to the Lord. Because again, the clock is ticking. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, it is at hand. Those aren't my words, those are the words of Christ. And so this is a day of repentance. Because again, you do not want to wait until Christ is coming to be trying to repent. You do not want to wait until you are on your deathbed because you never know when you will be on your deathbed. You want to take advantage of the time. So again, do as this woman. The Lord, he certainly wants to forgive you. And when you come to him, as John said, the Lord, he is both faithful and just to cleanse all of us from our sins, from our unrighteousness. So again, I encourage all of you today, go before the Lord and you will find grace, you will find mercy, and again, you will find salvation. He will give it to you. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Be sure that you like this video and if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following this channel. Hit the alert bell as well so that you don't miss any notifications for the next video that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.